Welcome to the Kitchen Chemist. I'm your boy, amateur pro home chef Nathaniel Levinson, and today we're going to be making a baked chicken dish. Now, I base this recipe loosely on Julia Child's uh, baked chicken, one of Julia Child's baked chicken recipes. You put it together, you throw it in the oven, it comes out, and it's delicious. So you're going to need chicken. I prefer chicken thighs. You can use chicken breasts. You need carrots, celery, and onion. You'll also need seasoning of your choice. I like Old Bay. This is my favorite seasoning blend. I recommend this for everything. It's just a great blend of herbs and spices. You can use whatever you prefer. I definitely recommend something with paprika. I also use Emerald's Essence. Bam! This is good stuff. Uh, Emerald is what got me into cooking, so I'm honoring his legacy by using his seasoning blend, which is quite good. Um, you'll also need some red wine and some cornstarch to make the sauce afterwards, and a stick of butter. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make what's called a mirepoix. This is just chopping up, dicing, well, I'm gonna do a rough chop. Celery, carrots, and onions. Then we'll just throw this right into a frying pan. Carrots are gonna peel. You can use a peeler, but you can also just use the flat of your knife. But, you know, obviously be careful that you don't hit your hand, right? Just kind of scrape off the peel. You can obviously use a peeler if you want a prettier cut, but uh, these vegetables will, uh, you'll see what we do with these vegetables, so it's not that big, a, big of a deal. And there are a lot of ways to cut an onion. I have one way in particular that I like. So you cut the ends off, cut it in half, then you peel off the papery layer. I usually peel off one more layer because sometimes that's, that one's funky. Onions release a sulfurous compound, okay? They, they, they release a sulfide gas that when it hits your eyeballs, your eyeballs are covered in moisture, it reacts with the water in your eyeballs and forms sulfuric acid. So the reason it makes you cry is it's literally melting your eyeballs. Although on such a small scale, it, you're not, it's not dangerous but you're, it hurts because your body is saying, ow, my eyeballs are melting. And of course, you're crying because tears are a way of, uh, your body has of uh, flushing impurities off of your eyes. So that's why onions make you cry. Garlic can do that too. Shallots, I find, are the worst offender. Shallots make me cry like nothing else. Like this, if you cry every time. All right, so now we've got our vegetables in here. We're just going to hit them with a little bit of fat. In this case, olive oil. So we're just sweating the vegetables, just opening up the flavors a little bit, softening them a little bit. We're not breaking them down a lot, but just taking the edge off of them. So medium high heat for a couple of minutes, and that should be sufficient. So now that we've softened our vegetables, we're going to get a casserole dish and just lay our vegetables down, spread them out. This is where the fun begins. So we're going to take our chicken thighs. Now we're gonna season these, just give them a sprinkling of kosher salt, I'm gonna hit him with some Old Bay, and I'm gonna hit him with some Essence. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start layering our chicken in here. Just throw it in there on the vegetables. Now, once you've got your first layer down, now comes the really fun part. We're gonna take a stick of butter, and we're going to lay about a tablespoon of butter on top of each piece of chicken. I am using salted butter. So we're building a seasoned stack of chicken with butter sandwiched in between. And just cover that with the last bit of butter. This is why the French are the best cooks because they say, does it have enough butter? No, to everything. We're going to cover this in parchment paper. This is just going to seal it in, make sure it stays moist. It doesn't need to be tightly sealed. We're gonna throw this in a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And then we're gonna check and see if it's done. And don't worry about overcooking this. If you use chicken thighs, you're not gonna overcook this. So I'm going to remove all this chicken, set it aside for now, cover it with foil, keep it warm. We're going to strain all of this goodness, all this vegetable, chicken, butter, cordial. We're going to strain it off, and you can eat these vegetables or you can throw them away. Totally up to you if they're edible, and they probably taste great. So, I'm just going to strain those bad boys. To this sauce pot, I'm going to add a slurry of cornstarch and red wine. Why am I slurrying? because I'm adding red wine, and if you don't make a slurry with cornstarch, then you get lumpy stuff that doesn't ever separate out. I'm just gonna take a spoon and mix it all up. So corn, well, cornstarch is a thickening agent, so when cornstarch comes to a boil, it kind of gels. And uh, so if you add cornstarch to a liquid and then boil it down, it will form almost like a gravy. So we're gonna add this to our mixture. We're gonna add a little bit more red wine. And now we're going to rapidly boil this down. So 
uh, do keep an eye on this because it does tend to froth over, but you just want to throw it on some high heat. So I finished the sauce with a pat of butter and a squeeze of lemon juice. Mmm. That's good sauce. And season accordingly with salt and pepper. All right, let's try this bad boy. Mm. Super juicy, super tender, great flavor. I mean, the seasoning blend you pick is gonna make a big difference, but that's just delicious. And that sauce kind of cuts through the richness of the, of the meat. Mm. I love this chicken dish. Well, that'll be it for us to, here on Kitchen Chemist today. Until next time, thank you, Julia Child. <laughs> <laughs>